So the reason we wanted to make tours and tournaments was to give the player a lot of things to do during peacetime. Hosting grand tournaments, weddings and exploring the activities in more detail. To get to these new activities you need to travel. You assemble an entourage, a caravan master and set out on the road. You can customize your route if you wish to avoid danger. Or maybe you want to head straight into the danger just to prove how uh, you can overcome it. So you travel to all of these grand activities across the world. If the King of France is hosting a tournament, you have to plan and plot a route to get there. We want to make sure that you feel like your character is present on the map. Now you will see your character moving along a route that you have plotted yourself. You will experience a lot of new opportunities within the activities. They also, of course, have grander purposes in the strategic layer because characters and strategy go hand in hand in CK. Tours can get really grand. You can visit up to 10 of your subjects and they can take years to complete but have great rewards at the end. As a mighty king or an emperor, you need to visit your subjects for various reasons, maybe you want to impress them after a succession, or maybe you want to tax them just a little bit more. You plot a route between their capitals and set out inside your own realm, also visiting other subjects along the way, like farmers or barons. If you set out on a travel to a foreign realm where you leave your own, a regent will rule in your stead, which means that you will slowly lend your powers to that character and they will either rule wisely or perhaps uh, start skimming a little bit of the top for themselves. You want to select a regent that is loyal to you. For example, someone like your own mother would usually be loyal. Then again, there's no guarantee that someone with a more nefarious purpose will scheme to take over the regent position while you're gone. If someone takes over your regency, you will have to probably travel home quite quickly to start swinging the scales of power back in your favor, getting rid of any abuse of power that might happen in your name. If you travel a lot, you might gain a new trait called Traveler, where you will gather experience over time, especially if you head into dangerous terrain and survive. You will eventually accrue a lot of experience and become a renowned traveler. So tournaments is a grand activity on an entirely different scale. When you arrive after a long and arduous travel, you will be greeted by the locale screen. Essentially, a full screen where you can decide to visit the village, the tournament grounds, the church, and you can prepare for the upcoming contests. The more contests, the further into the game you are. You can decide to compete in various things such as recitals, duels, melees, jousts of course. And all of these will increase your skills. So you can slowly but surely become the best tournament goer in the entire world. You can bring your knights to grand tournaments and they will brandish their coat of arms on their armor and fight in your name, gathering glory and potentially getting an accolade. You, as a ruler, can bestow an accolade upon especially prestigious knights, perhaps someone who's distinguished themselves in a tournament. Then they will provide you with special bonuses and even carry on their legacy through an heir. If you're an intrigue-focused character, you might decide to win by alternative means. You can visit the tavern and poison people's ale the night before, or decide during an active contest to maybe swap someone's weapon for a less good one. If you wish, you can bet on who's going to win a certain contest. Of course, there's no shame in betting on yourself. Hosting a tournament is very prestigious in and of itself. Competing? You can decide to compete if you want to, you don't have to, you can spectate. Especially if you are um, not allowed to fight. Grand weddings stand out from regular ones in that they are diplomatic and intrigue centers where you can really exercise your power upon those who decide to visit. 
Maybe you can impress a neighboring ruler to become your vassal just by showing how grand the ceremony is. Or you can decide to take it in an entirely different direction and eliminate the other family in a bloody wedding. In this expansion, we've decided to rework activities massively, from the lowliest hunt to the greatest tournament. They are now impressive things where you have to plan a travel to get there and partake. And they have great rewards depending on what type of activity you're attending or hosting. There are many different types you can decide to host. For example, you can decide to hunt. When going on a hunt, you can decide to either have a normal beast hunt, search for the legendary white animal if you've had a sighting, mind you, or go on a falconry hunt. All of these provide different uh, experiences and the most interesting hunts are triggered by you having a master of the hunt hired. A falconry hunt is something that every character can host, regardless of if they are allowed to be a fighter in their culture or not, where you will impress others with your birds. Where the travel system really, really shines is when you decide to go on a pilgrimage. Your holy sites might be far away, maybe even overseas. And then you have to travel through various lands and see the sites. And when you're setting out as a pilgrim, you might reflect upon your own mortality. Or perhaps you're just a curious tourist who wants to experience other cultures. If simple food isn't enough to sate your vengeance, you can decide to host a murder feast, where you will eliminate a specific target and anyone around them. When going to an activity, you will choose an intent, what you want to accomplish personally when going to that activity. For example, if you go to a hunt, you might decide that your intent is to slay the beast personally. When going to a feast, it might just be to relax. When going on a pilgrimage, you might want to convert anyone you can possibly convert along the way. And in the grand activities, the intents can be diplomacy, for example, in a grand wedding, where you want to massively impress someone in, in particular. So if you promise someone a grand wedding, you can marry above your station. Depending on who they are, of course, but everyone likes a spectacle. And when you spend this much on something, you're bound to be able to catch yourself a good spouse. You're not locked to the same intent throughout an entire activity. In fact, you can succeed or fail even, and then you can select a new one whenever you like. To really show the grandeur of a tournament, especially seeing as they grow over the ages, we have improved all of the character armor in the game. And especially for Western armors, you will see them evolve from early armors to full plate helmets and brandishing their coat of arms on their armors in the late eras. In addition to these shining new armors, we've also added new early era and late era Western clothing so that also the hosts can look spectacular in different ways. In the update coming out alongside tours and tournaments, we are adding several new and intriguing systems. We've updated how buildings work throughout the eras, uh, how vassals view your rulership. We've improved the barbershop so you can really show off all of these new and shining armors that you have and many, many other things.